Hello, 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 hello. This is Dirty Trucking, Dirty Trucking. Um, somebody got on my YouTube a while back and uh, asked me to make a video about what happened to me at Chrysler. Now, I made several of those videos at my when I stayed at the Alden Towers, but I ended up deleting the majority of them. But some of them, I think, were still on there, but uh, looked like they all deleted. So, um, I guess... Uh, Tell you what happened to me at Warren Truck Plant. Before I got into trucking, before I even thought about getting in trucking, I worked on an assembly line at Warren Truck Plant here in Warren, Michigan, on Mound Road. They are the manufacturers. They manufacture the Dodge Ram pickup truck and the Dodge Dakotas. I got hired in there in 99 and stayed there until I resigned in December of 2004. Now, why would I resign Chrysler? Because they did something to me there. A co-worker who was also a friend, I thought was a friend, and my union which was the UAW Local 140, told a heinous lie on me and let it circulate throughout the plant. But I didn't tell him what this boy was doing. This man, he's a grown man, he ain't no boy. He knew what the fuck he was saying. Said that I was harassing him. Now, Mind you, ain't nobody told me none of this shit. This is shit I'm finding out after they done put me off my job and all this shit. I'm going to get to when they put me off my job. I'm working on the line. The, they come down there and tap me on the shoulder. The union, my union did. Walk me over to the EAP rep. Mr. Cooper, I ain't going to say his first name. That was his name. Last name Cooper. I went in there. His words he told me. That I needed to go see a doctor to save my job. And this was coming from labor relations in the plant. I said, save my job for what? What are you talking about? He said, he don't have any more. He don't, he's pretty much washing his hands of the matter. He didn't want to give any more details. Though I knew he knew, but he didn't tell me. But he said, this is labor relations and left it at that. Schedule me an appointment to go to Henry Ford. Henry Ford now. To have a talk with a psychiatrist. Because of something somebody said. Said I was harassing. What the fuck would I want to harass that nigga for? Now, I'm in there talking to a shrink. I'm thinking this shit a joke. When it happened, I thought it was a joke. I went in there. I remember speaking to the lady. It was a lady, uh, if I can remember her name correctly. I think her name was Re Rebecca. I'm not sure. Uh, I think the first psychiatrist's name was Rebecca. But she was Henry Ford. I had to go over to Fairlane. That's where the appointment was. Went over there, spoke to her. She asked me some typical questions. Then she asked me my birth date. So I lied and gave her the wrong birth date. I'm thinking it's a joke. Then I turned around and told her the correct birth date. Then she said, oh, you don't know your, what your birth date is? Then scheduled me. So I would like you to speak to a colleague of mine. Name was Dr. Gormo. Never forget that name. Dr. Gormo. Henry Ford. I'm over there talking to psychiatrists and don't know the fuck why. So I get in there. He wants me to sign some document so they can go in a plant to talk to my coworkers. I said, I'm not signing shit until you first tell me what the hell going on here. So I told him what I was told. And then he relayed to me that what I'm telling him is conflicting to what he was told and by the plant. So, I get put off my job. 
That was in 2003. I'm at home. Just come from the grocery store. Plain as day. I remember this like that shit was yesterday. When I got that fucking phone call. From now. This is Rebecca from Labor Relations at Warren Truck Plant. Just came home from the grocery store. I'm off work. I don't know what the fuck going on, but I'm going about my daily activities. I get a phone call. See, back then, that's when the cell phone was really just coming out and evolving. You still had that kind of brick-like looking cell phone, and they had pagers back then. I had a cell phone. Mine was gray, little brick-looking thing. It ain't, it ain't the nice little neat ones we got now. And popular back then it was landlines in 2003 I get home I see that my accuser his name was Mario I ain't gonna give him his last name but his name is Mario young boy in his 20s I knew him I knew his girlfriend. We were all friends when we got hired in the plant. It was like, it was four of us when we came in. We just all became good friends coming in. Now, why he would go around and tell the plant I was harassing, what would he do that? I don't know. And why would my employer withhold telling me that he was going around saying that shit. And then they believed it, acted on it, and put me off my job. I'm hearing shit on the line. I had a relative work there. She coming over to the line, snatched my keys off my station one day, talking about she wasn't going to give them back. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Why are you playing with my house keys? You don't take my damn keys. You ain't never even been to my damn house until this shit happened. Excuse me, harassment. Put me off my job. Place me on the cold 31. That's their payment thing when they put you off your job, when the employer put you off. Well, I was getting a uh, uh, sick and accident. It, it, the pay was splitting up, but it's, it's called a cold 31. Got escorted out the plant by my union steward. First name, Mark. I'm not going to tell the last name. Mark is a bastard and was a coward and didn't stand up and didn't represent me like he should have. He sat there and let them put me off my job. This man walked down the aisles of that plant almost every day. Him and uh, back then the president of the... Uh, Union. I'm not going to get into his name because I ain't going to be naming all these names. They came down the line. All I did was my job. I wasn't bothering nobody. I didn't talk to nobody. I didn't hang with nobody. I didn't have none of them at my house except uh, Mario that came over there. Then Mario set me up with a double date with his friend who also worked for Chrysler. But the, the Jefferson plant at the time. But now, none of that really is relevant about why they put me on my job. Because I ain't knowing none of this was all linked together. So they put me off my job. I'm at home. I come home from the grocery store. This is in 2003. I see there's a phone call from Mario's number on my landline. So I return the call. His number was on my caller ID. I remember this plain as day. I called a number. And Rebecca from Warren Truck Plants Labor Relation answered the phone. She immediately tells me this is a harassment matter and you're not to contact this man anymore. That's what she told me. This is Warren Truck's labor relation, Rebecca. 
Mind you, I don't even know who the hell she is. Because I don't get in trouble with Warren Truck. I ain't never been up to labor relations for anything in my life since I've been there. But that's what she told me. Now I'm furious. Now I'm on the phone. I'm like, first of all, why are you answering his phone? That's what I didn't understand. And later on, part went further down the video. I'm going to show, tell you where there was a setup. No, I'm going to get to the setup now. I found out years later that that phone call was a setup. From another guy that worked at Warren Truck Plant. Now, I used to be a bus driver before I started working at Warren Truck Plant. I left Smart to go to Warren Truck Plant. I got the call while I was at Smart that they was wanting to hire me. If I said no, they wasn't going to call again. So I, I asked what to do at Smart. And they told me, you better get on up out of here, girl. So I left and went on to Chrysler. Warren Truck Plant. They was Chrysler then. When this matter happened, they were Daimler Chrysler when this matter happened. But I came in under the original Chrysler contract. But they were Daimler Chrysler when this happened. So, to the setup about the phone call. Now, I'm at home. I'm off work. Usually when you get put off work at the job for some type of medical, you're supposed to have some documents. Because those documents need to be provided to the people that is paying your medical while you're off. See, the code 31 was already set up. My union, Mark, gave me a phone number to call as he escorted me out the damn plant. Told me to call and set this up, but it was already set up. I didn't have to do anything. So the phone call, I found out years later, years, years, years later, was a fucking setup. Through somebody else that happened to overhear me. I was riding around on the smart bus. Because I used to drive a bus. And it was a buddy of mine. I used to know we were good friends. We worked together. We were co-workers when, when I was there. And he was still there driving. So I would go to kill time. I'd just get on his bus and just ride all day. And then going on back to where I was at. But he happened to overhear me mentioning something. A conversation me and my uh, buddy on the smart bus was talking about the driver about Chrysler and the guy overheard me talking about the phone call up at labor relations and the shocking news that he tells me was that he was there in the up there when the phone call came in and he told me it was a setup I'm like a setup what, what are you talking about I find out that they had Mario call my house. And I guess they just, when they call the house and your phone number on the caller ID, you know, and he's supposed to be a friend. Oh, you know, you're going to call your friend back. Now, at the time I was put off, I had no idea really that Mario had done this. I was Getting an idea he was involved with this. But nobody told me. So it was told to me that that labor relations had Mario call my house. And I guess they just knew I was going to call him back. And they said when I called, he said, this guy said when he was in office, when I called back. Mario handed the phone to Rebecca. He said they set me up. Why would my employer do that? So you tried to set me up to make it look like I was harassing him, calling him. When he called my landline. And that could be proven. Because he called my landline. All he got to go is the AT and T. That's all they got to do to find that. Find his phone number he had. Find my phone number I had. 
get with AT&T and pull them phone records. And you will see it was an incoming call from him. I never answered it. I just came home and see he was on the call. I did and called it back. So that's what the guy told me. That was the most shocking news I've ever heard. And I think, uh, I don't know if I, I was still going through the court thing then. I don't know if the court had dismissed the case yet or it was still in, in I had filed it. They were still doing their thing. But uh, I filed a lawsuit against Warren Truck, but Warren Truck Plant and the UAW and Mario. And the doctor that they, they, they had a specific doctor. That's the reason why I never got returned to work. So I got put off twice. This is a long story, and I ain't going to be to get it all in this video. So I'm going to make it as, as, as uh, informative as I can. But I'm going to have to kind of get through it because it's a long story that I can't tell on this video. This should have been some motherfucking segment, a documentary of what they motherfucking did. Me, a mother, raising a son. I was a homeowner. My house on Beaconsfield. At a house on Beaconsfield in Detroit. Homeowner. I was raising my son. Left smart, went to Chrysler. Wasn't in no debt. Barely. Normal shit. No oppression, nothing. Was living good. Had a car. House. No worries. And then my employer and Mario and my UAW concocted this heinous lie. First they were talking about I was crazy. Then you said I was harassing. Put me off a job. So... I'm at home. Now, I found out that was a setup now. The setup part, mind you, I found it out years later. I got put off my job. They didn't give me no documentation. I kept asking them for documentation. I kept being told to go to the, the solid the union hall up there that's up the street from Warren Truck Plant. They give me the documents. I go in there, the, the little chick. With the, the little light skinned chick that up there always had a fucking dog in there. Tell me we ain't got no documents. I said, but they told me to come in and get documents. You can't put me off my job on a medical with no documents. You got to, what's wrong with me? It's got to be some documents. You got to give me something. And that's a known fact in any plant in the process of medical. So, while I'm at home, I had him pull my file. Now, mind you, I pulled my file from the medical office. Nothing strange in there. Even the most recent visit I had, when I went in there and said my back started hurting on the line, they checked my back, sent me back out on the line with a bunch of aspirins and all this other shit. Said I was okay. And then I don't know if I tore those papers up or what happened to them. I ended up requesting the file again. For the medical office. And then I read something in there. They had placed something in my file to try to make it look like I was going crazy. I read in there that I had supposed to told a doctor that I was hearing voices. I ain't never told no doctor that shit. Not at the plant. I barely even went to the plant doctor. I didn't went in there for my back. So I called up to the medical. I'm like, who, who would have access to somebody's file to put that shit in there? I said, because I just pulled my file prior. This wasn't in there. I didn't read it nowhere in there. Now all of a sudden it was in there. Now they started placing shit in my file. Trying to make it look like I was crazy. I guess that was to help go along with the lie they was telling. Okay, I'm going to fast forward 2003. Now they got me off. I'm at home pissed now because I done found out this supposed to be some damn harassment. I'm like, what the fuck going on? I'm in total shock. I'm like, harassment? Mario? What? You must be fucking joking. So we're going to fast forward. Uh, 
the medical people the cold that uh found out that I was sitting at home and uh there was I kept saying nothing's wrong with me, they won't give me no documents. I don't even know why I'm off. So if it wasn't for those people, I believe the company was called Sedgwick. I think it was Sedgwick. They called over to Chrysler. And it was those people that got me back to work. Because they weren't going to pay a medical for somebody to be off work and ain't nothing wrong with them. I wasn't I wouldn't going to no damn doctor on no regular visits. And they found that out. They asked me that. So, that's how I got back to work in 2003. Now, when I got back to work, I was talking with the co-workers on the line. And uh, it's going to be some parts in here. Like I said, I'm going to have to fast forward to this. Uh, I was told that my co-workers were saying I was acting out of ordinary. Uh, something about uh, uh, I wasn't talking and all this other shit. Am I on a damn line? I don't barely talk anyway. Shit, you supposed to be working on the fucking truck. And then when I get wind of something was going on, but you just don't know, hey, I get quiet, start listening, watching. Anyway, I'm asking my coworker next to me. His name was Don. That's the guy named that worked next to me. Oh, up, up to the right, up, up the line from me. His name was Don. And uh, I told him what they had done. They put me off my job. It was a conversation with him. The reason why I went on ahead and filed a grievance. He said, they put you off your job. You didn't get 100% of your pay. And, and you need to file a grievance. So I filed a grievance. What the fuck did I do that for? You know what that grievance did? It got me put off my job again in 2004. They called me upstairs in the meeting room. Mark Taylor was there. Security. And I'm sitting there at the table. Asking Mark Taylor. That's his name. Sorry, I didn't put his name out there. Asked him. You gonna let this happen again? He throws his hand up and said, my hand's tied. That's exactly what he told me sitting at that table. And at the table, the security, playing security was on the side of me. I get threatened at the table. I mean, I'm about to get escorted out the plant. And if was I refusing, and he linked in when he said that shit. I had to go down to the doctor again. He walked me down to the doctor. I'm sitting there. We're going through this bullshit again. Mark was the one that escorted me out the plant. He was my union steward during the time. He was the one that escorted me out the plant. He was the one that's supposed to handle this. But there's another union official involved. He's a union president at the time. I ain't gonna mention his name. I never harassed anybody in that plant. Not Mario, not a man, not anybody. I was on day shift. I came in, did my job. When Diamond Chrysler took over, I forgot what year that was. Uh, they took over, and I ended up getting switched to nights. I got on nights. I'm not a night person because my son was was young then, and uh, but I worked it out, and uh, we got the notification we can go back on day shift. I got back on days. But I'm going to tell you some bits and pieces of stuff I found out. Yeah, I'm jumping around in the story. But the whole, I got put off my job because I supposedly had harassed a co-worker. His name was Mario. The boy was in his 20s. I was in my 30s when I was at Chrysler. 2003, I was, when that happened, in 2003, I was 32. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you some of my, oh, and I went to go get a picture out of my bag with my pictures in to show you my house that I had. Somebody keeps stealing my family photos, and they've been doing that for years. I've been noticing my family pictures been disappearing for years. 
out of my own apartment. A bag I keep in the closet that I barely even go in. I go back, something to happen. And to prompt me to go look for something. Just like me making this video. Somebody gets on here and says, why don't you make a video about what happened to you at Chrysler? And I go look for that picture of my house. Because that's where the incident, this is where I was at when it was happening. The picture is gone of my house. I got pictures of inside the house. But I ain't got that main picture of outside that I took when I sold the house. On Bakersfield. But this is me. I'm going to flip it over. This is me when I was at Chrysler. That's inside of my house on Bakersfield. This is me. Uh, I think we had a New Year's uh, thing. And this is the dress I wore at the Union thing up there. They had a uh, New Year's thing. Or this is a New Year's party I was going to. I don't know. I think this was the Union one I was going to. But this is me. I believe this picture, I was 32. Working at Chrysler. This is me. This is my house. This is my living room. And this was my truck. Now, this is not, this is in Mississippi when I went down to visit my father's home state. But this is the truck that I had when I was at Chrysler. That I had to turn in after this shit happened. This was my truck. So, Dirty Trucking did have vehicles. This is my truck. Now, this, is a tr this is my truck in front of my house. That's my neighbor car across the street who is a Wayne County Sheriff. This is my neighbor's van that was next door to me. He was an electrician for the city. But this is my truck parked in front of my house. But this is my son in front of me. I don't want to put him on, on this. Right now he was little. He was uh, small then. Not small, but uh, I don't want him in this right now. But it, this mess affected him too, mentally. Because we lost everything after they did this. This is my house. This is in front of my house. This is in front of my house. This is my neighborhood right here. This is me. This is how I was looking when they did that shit. Me, a single parent. And as they, as much as they preach about single parents trying to raise their kids, my employer, one truck plant, did that bullshit to me. I ain't have time to dig out the PPO. This boy, oh, it's a whole lot of tragic shit involved in this. This is the most scandalous shit that happened to me here in Michigan. This should have been on the news. Should have my court case should have been heard. They dismissed my court case. Fuck me. We ain't telling nobody this shit happened. We ain't telling nobody what they did to you. They ran me to doctors. I'm going in my doctor. Abusive. I had half insurance. Abuse of my insurance. Running me to the doctor to get checked out for something that wasn't wrong with me. Went in the doctor to try to get back to work, to get some type of documentation to get back to work. I went into my doctor. She examined me. She said, well, uh, this seems to be some type of... Now, this is what she's seeing on her computer. My doctor... You done communicated this shit to Henry Ford Hospital. My doctor is telling me this seems to be some type of mental issue. So I guess this coming from the visit when I went to the psychiatric department because of Chrysler to save my job. So she examines me. Tell me ain't nothing wrong with me. Give me a one. It was a one sentence letter. I took it over to the local hall, the local. Gave it to the president. I think he was the president. Of, uh, I forgot his title, but he was. He was the current president, not the guy that I'm thinking of right now. This guy was the current president. And I uh, give him that. Uh, 
I give all I turn all this shit in to Christ with these documents that uh this is what the doctor said, but they keep talking about it's something mental. Now I don't want to get this story twisted up, uh talking about it because like I said, it's a lot involved, and I'm be skipping around on what's involved here. But the main thing, they put me off my job. Because they said I was harassing a co-worker. Yes, it's true. Dirty trucking got put off her job because they claim I was harassing a co-worker. But let the union tell it, that little light-skinned chick, she liked to tell people I was fired. Because when I called up there years later, still trying to get documents for my court case, weren't you fired? She still keeps saying that shit. And I bet you if I call up there today, the bitch would say it today. All of them knew this shit was a lie. All of them was in on it. And them damn doctors. Try to get me to take medication. For what? Even a plan. Why don't you just take the pills? Just get them so you can get back to work. Why would I take pills? And there's nothing wrong with me. Why would I pay for a prescription to be filled for pills and there's nothing wrong with me? And they're being examined by two goddamn doctors. Their eyes was bloodshot red. Looked like they was high as hell on fucking drugs. And they at the table. I want you to count back from 100 by, I don't know if he said 10 or 20. Then somebody else coming in. His, this nigga's eyes so red. But these, you want to write me a prescription? I'm not taking shit for nothing. Ain't nothing wrong with me. And you're going to tell me what the fuck going on here. So, like I said, I got back. I filed a grievance. That grievance led to me getting put off again in 2004. Now, 2004, I'm going to jump fast forward. I never got back from that one. They put me off my job. Put me on a medical. I was getting half. Uh, that's why I said unemployment. Michigan's unemployment office is involved with this. I got put off my job. This time they didn't pay me through a code 31. They paid me through a sick and accident. And that's where you get half from unemployment and uh, the half, other half somewhere else. I forgot how to go. But I know that one half comes from unemployment. That's why I said unemployment, Michigan unemployment, was involved with me not having any money because my benefits was cut off. I told them I was still off work. The employer has not returned me. I was still employed then. I hadn't resigned yet. I resigned. Let's get that fact right now because they keep talking about I was fired for harassment. They was going around talking about I was crazy. An ex-boyfriend of mine, name was Brian, got in contact with me. He knew some girl in the plant. Said when he heard about this, he said uh, they told him, she told him that I flipped out. I flipped out. Now, this is word right now. Mind you, I'm homeless when I find this shit out. I'm, 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 I think I was homeless by then. Because I, I, I can't, ain't sure on if I was actually homeless by then when he told me that. Or when he got back in contact with me and told me that. But that's what he told me. He knew a girl that worked in the plant. At my plant. Warren Truck Plant. And he said when he got word, they told him, she told him that I suppose had flipped out. And he couldn't believe it. This is Brian, a guy I used to date. I used to date him. His name was Brian. But that's what he told me. I'm supposed to have flipped out. For what? I wasn't doing shit. They made the fucking shit up. It was a lie. I wasn't harassing nobody. All I know... I was dating Mario's friend. I was dating his friend. I don't know what the hell happened after that. We went on a double date. Me and 
Me and him, I disclosed some things to him. And I believe I asked him, were you going around telling Mario what I was telling you? Because I believe Mario was telling the shit in the plant. Because I used to hear a little shit when they come down the line. They used to whisper, uh, mm, I wonder what's going on down there. But they were talking about my private area. And uh, the line supervisor, Jeff, used to always put Mario next to me. Knowing by the end now, I done got wind he was involved in whatever this is. But he's just not telling the truth, being truthful. And he, he can see the attitude, the tension between us two. Because you now, now you deliberately got this boy working next to me. He used to come down the line with another co-worker. Oh, it, it's a lot of shit in this, and I can't get it out in the video. And and I hate I had to jump around with this like this. Because I need to go in the room and get the PPO paper. Because you're not going to believe that. The personal protective order. Matter of fact, hold on. I'm going to pause this video. I'm going to go get it. Mario filed. No. I found out through the lawsuit. When the judge ordered them to release documents to me, that's when I started finding out shit. Because I didn't know at the time I found a lawsuit. I still didn't have no no 100% accuracy of what the hell was going on. Because I had no documents. How do you do this to somebody and you ain't gave them no documents, no medical nothing? You ain't even give me no paper saying, we think she crazy. Nothing. Hold on, let me go see if I can find this document real quick. Well, I'll be damned. Not only has someone come into my apartment and taken my personal photo of my house, the documents that I had printed out from my court case that I kept in my closet in a shoebox is now missing. I just went into both boxes. Those papers wouldn't be hard for me to find. They're gone. And I know for a fact they were in that box when I moved in this damn apartment. This motherfucker has brought his ass in here and took shit out of my box. Because I remember coming home one day after I just moved in here and the maintenance man came in here to fix some shit. That I found a washer laying in my closet on top of one of my shoe boxes. My court papers are gone. So now I'm going to write this apartment building a nice little letter informing them that stuff is coming up missing out my damn apartment. Otherwise, I'd have showed you the PPO, which I can go get anyway again because it was from Macomb County. Let me tell you how this, my, my employer, Warren Truck Plant. Now, I didn't know this, that they had told Mario to do this. I found this out through the court documents, which I no longer have. It was a big bag of stuff I got dealing with my court case. And when the court dismissed it, I threw all that shit out. But going through that, there were some email documents where I read the inner office emails from Labor Relations. Labor Relations told Mario to go take out a personal protective order and bring it back to them. Bring it back to them. They told him. So you trying to get me arrested for something I wasn't even fucking doing. So I found out about it. I went up to I went out to Macomb County. It was filed in Macomb County because that's the county one truck plant is in. Macomb County. I live in Wayne County. Mario lived in Wayne County. But the matter happened in Macomb County. So I go out there, I get a copy of this, I'm reading this shit, now I'm getting pissed. Now this was 2005, 2005 now, when I find out about this goddamn PPO, 05, I left in 2004, and I found out through the court documents, I wouldn't know that it exists, went out there, found out he filed it. And it was denied. But I'm reading what was on there, the wording. 
The shit he was saying. I had an imaginary fixation of a relationship. Uh, something about I needed to lose weight before I could date him. I mean, the words were like a doctor had written them, not, not Mario. Then that paper got away from me. I requested again, but every time I got it, it was it was different. It was it was worded different, and now it's gone. I had the PPO printed out. I had a specific documents printed out from my case, and it should have been in the closet. That's gone. That's what they do. They come in here taking my shit. Then you get on my site and tell me to make a video about it. All I got to do is go print it out from the court. You ain't did nothing. But if I see you change some wordings to it. So, yes, dirty trucker got put off a job for harassment. I wasn't harassing nobody. I wasn't fired for sexual harassment. I wasn't sexually harassing anybody. I don't know what the fuck they was talking about. I think something else was going on there. The reason why they were sending me to doctors. What were you sending me to doctors for? What were they doing to me? Why were you sending me to these doctors? They were saying shit I hadn't said. Writing about shit that there was no way in the hell they would have known about. Shit I used to say to workers on the line. My union steward wrote in a, uh, a document like I told him that shit. Oh, and my union steward, Mark, claimed that I told him, I said that he broke in my house. When did I tell you that? Yes, I was put off my job for harassment. But I resigned because I refused to keep going through that goddamn shit at an employer and you're not going to tell me what the fuck going on. Now you harassing me medically. You making me go back and forth to the doctors like something wrong with me. Using my insurance. Making a fool out of me. When you was fucking lying. Now, I got to deal with something going on in this new apartment. Because they done came in here and took my goddamn documents. It was in the shoebox where I had it and always kept it. It's been there since I moved. That's where it was when I moved in here. Now the picture to my house is gone. And my court papers. I guess they wanted to see how much of, uh, uh, I was suing them for. Because it was on there. The amount I was suing for was on there. So I might have to make another video, but uh, now I got to go put all this shit back together because let me show you, I just went in there looking for it because I got everything thrown out on the damn floor. My shit is missing. I done tore the apartment up. My shit is missing. Let me show you why I kept it. I kept it in a shoebox. That shoebox right there. I came back here one day after the maintenance man had been in here and found a washer that goes to a, a, a screw laying it on top of the box. It wasn't in there before I left. Then Donald made a look in there. My paper's gone. My picture's gone. They come in here taking my shit. So now they got pissed off. The sidetrack on finish telling us the story. But it's going into 43 minutes. Like I said, this is a long ass story. But yes, I got put off my job for harassment. No, I wasn't fired for harassment like them lying ass bitches would say. My supervisor was involved. The union, local, UAW, local 140, was involved. My union steward was involved. My coworker, Mario, was involved. They also had, oh yes, in 2004, the, they, uh, some new lady got involved. Her name was, I'm on first name, I'm on first name, baby, Nora. Never seen this lady before in my life. Asked me would I agree to go see a doctor. A hand-picked doctor. His name was Dr. Stewart. I ain't gonna say his last name. Of Evaluation Group out in Southfield, 
told me they're going to send me there. Whatever this guy says goes. We're going to put this to bed. That was her exact words. And I was wondering why she using those choice words. We're going to put this to bed. Bed? You want me to stand here and pretend like something going on that ain't fucking going on that you lying about? And you running me back and forth to the doctors till now I'm pissed. I tried to resign twice. The first time, a co-worker who works in the office up there, who was also a high school classmate, stopped me. I'm not going to let you do this. Let the union handle it. Okay, I listened to him. Calm down. So he took the resignation. But my resignation papers ended up with the documents when, they were, when the court told them to release it. I'm like, how did they get that? If you taking it and telling me don't give it to them, how did they even get that? So they sent me to this guy. I'm talking to this guy. You know, I'm just rambling off. He asked me some questions. Why are you discussing my vaginal area? Is that why you put me off my job? Is that why I'm off my motherfucking job? Word was that you said I was crazy. And I'm supposed to have been harassing somebody. We get to talking. We get on the subject of uh, the vaginal area. He talking about my father. He wrote in there that my father was an alcoholic. When I got that document and read that shit, I was pissed. I drove the fuck out there immediately and went the fuck off. Why would you put this shit in there? My father wasn't an alcoholic. Then you wrote a lie about my medical history that you didn't even fucking verify. How you... Motherfucker, I don't, can't nobody come in there and tell you something in one day and you sit up there and write it in a fucking report like you already know about it. It was a fucking lie. And you put that in my report. And that's not why I never got back to work in 2004. His report. I didn't get back to work. So now I'm still sitting at home. I'm off. And this was the ultimate blow from the employer. They cut my benefits off. Now, I'm still employed there. I ain't resigned yet. Now they cut my benefits off. I'm going to call the benefits rep. Her name was Diane. I called Mark. I called the other one. I ain't going to call his name because he had an evil ass attitude. But then again, I might call his name again when I make another video about this. Nobody act like they know how to get the benefits back started. You got a Chrysler employee off on a medical that you put me off on. I didn't put myself on. I didn't go in there and say nothing was wrong with me. My doctor didn't tell you something was wrong with me. You said something was wrong with me and they got my doctors to correspond with it. It put me off. Then you cut my benefits off. Left me sitting at home with no motherfucking money coming in. And I was raising my son. Now, by that time, when that happened, my son was 14. And I was 34. This was my fucked up ass employer. Warren Truck Plant, the manufacturer of the Dodge Ram. They be glorifying all over the TV and shit. Selling Dodge Rams. It was saved by the, the president with the auto industry. With his auto, that plant always was about to go under. They always changed their name. It's Chrysler, Diamond Chrysler, Fiat Chrysler. You can't never stay Chrysler. Ford stay Ford. GM stay GM. But Chrysler can't seem to stay the same. Hmm. That's what my employer did to me. No, I didn't get fired. I wasn't harassing nobody. But that's what my employer did. And ever since that shit happened, that shit been following me from job to job to job. Motherfuckers in these apartments been going in my shit, reading my shit. You done took my shit, reading my fucking personal motherfucking documents. Probably passing it around motherfuckers in this goddamn building. Somebody need they ass kicked for that shit. You stealing my motherfucking shit. Out my goddamn apartment. Them papers been in there forever in that goddamn box. I ain't moved them. I ain't took them out. 
But that's what happened to me at Chrysler. For whoever that was that wanted this video made. So now I got to type a letter down to management because now I got some shit missing. It's a thief in the building. And you better get to him before I do. This is Dirty Trucking Out. Peace out.